Now we're going to talk all about the payments industry in Asia and how companies like yours can capture all the opportunities, the streets of gold that they have to offer. These guys are smiling next to me. Let me explain who we've got here in the studio to talk all about this. Jonathan Rosenthal is the international banking correspondent at The Economist. Next to him, Jairam Sriharan. I hope I pronounced that correctly. SVP Good. Retail Banking at Axis Bank. Eduardo Chadid is the executive vice president of products and business at Cielo. And and Neeraj Agarwal, partner and managing director at the Boston Consulting Group. Thanks so much. It makes a change for other people getting my name wrong, for me to get other people's name wrong, so that's <laughs> always good. So thanks very much to all of you for joining us. If I could start with you, Jonathan, first of all. Mm -hmm. Lots of opportunities now in Asia for the payments business, and it's quite interesting. Yesterday we heard in the opening plenary from both the chairman and the CEO of SWIFT, they were saying that you know SWIFT was always known for payments, and now they're going more and more into securities, but payments is still sexy in Asia. So tell us about what the opportunities are and how you think some of these guys can capture that. Yeah. So, so I suppose the starting point is that, that whenever I speak with uh, uh, banks and chief executives around the world, I mean, clearly everyone's looking at Asia and they're looking at it because, you know, for the obvious reasons, the trade flows, the, the, the rapid growth. Um, and they're really also looking at the fact that uh, you know, in many of these markets, banking penetration is pretty low and, and expanding quite deeply. And, and I think these guys can really talk about some of what's happening in their markets because they're, they're sort of also fascinating uh, uh, parallels and examples. Uh, uh, in particular, for example, uh, Brazil has, has achieved this you know, incredible and amazing growth. And yet when one looks at India, uh, the market still has quite some way to go. So, so great opportunities there. Let's talk about what are you guys seeing there, India and Brazil? Yeah, I think uh, the India market is is really, really big, not very much penetrated from an electronic standpoint. Only 3% of personal consumption expenditure in India is, uh, is is spent electronically. So that shows you how much potential is there. Even in the, And even with that, what we are seeing is uh, upwards of 30, 35% growth year on year for now 10, 15 years in a row, uh, but still that's just scratching the surface. So there's a ton of opportunity here. Um, the, the challenge though is to convert that opportunity into reality mm -hmm. by coming up with economically feasible models that banks can use to go out there uh, and, uh, and, and provide an electronic payment service to the customer, which they find easy to use and banks find profitable to offer. Yeah, and, and, and how are you doing that in India at the moment? Um, uh, a few different things. Um, you know, cards-based solutions have been around for a little while, but uh, haven't really taken off nearly as much. Um, uh, but they need to continue to get pushed. There's a lot more happening on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, so internet-based payments and internet-based purchases are a really, really big and growing part of, uh, of, of the economy. In fact, a, a, a strange statistic, probably unique to India, uh, is that about one-third of our debit card users use their debit cards only on the internet. Oh, uh, nice. I don't think there is any other market which yeah. which which uh, which has uh, a situation like that. So there are these strange things that have started emerging in the market because there's a little guy, you know, uh, staying in a hinterland who doesn't have access to a particular good in his uh, local shop, but he can actually buy it on the internet. Uh, so he prefers to go buy on the internet, not for convenience of payment mm -hmm. or, uh, or, or, or or you know convenience of the purchase process, but because there is accessibility yeah. uh, to the product on the internet, which which he doesn't have in the physical Very world. Very interesting. So there's a guy in a village in India, somewhere far remote. Yep. Uh, he has the internet and he's using his debit card and buying everything that he can. He's a shopaholic. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, great. Is that different to what you're seeing in Brazil? I think that in Brazil, uh, we had the luck of uh, being able to work on both sides of the equation. So on the card issuance side, 700 million cards were issued. On the merchant side, 2.5 million merchants were affiliated to the networks. That makes it very, a uh, very robust uh, scheme of things, which has enabled Brazil to grow at a 28% uh, year over year. And we've already reached also 28% of the total consumption expend expenditure in Brazil, which means that the car business is doing really well and it's penetrating more and more. I think that the challenge now is actually going to the outskirts getting to the smaller guys and getting the, uh, to the, when I mean smaller guys, is the smaller merchants, mm -hmm. and we'll probably reach those via a mobile solution, as well as getting all those people who already have cards to really start using those cards. Mm -hmm. A good example is debit cards, 280 million debit cards on the streets, but only 15% actually get used every month. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people still get their debit cards, go to an ATM, 
the ATM is inside a supermarket. They withdraw money and pay with that money. Uh, that I'm one of those people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should use your card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, chat with you a little bit because you know you've been looking at what not only these guys do but other corporates and where you see the key trends are in this yeah. particular industry. Uh, so you're saying in general across the market, what are the key trends? Uh, so one uh, one of the things I wanted to say was that the solution in each country is going to be unique. You know, so this uh, desire to extend solutions from one country to the other is not quite going to work out because the starting point, uh, the infrastructure, the regulation, all of that is very different. Um, in general, the other in important thing is there's been a lot of stuff which is happening, which is about using technology, which is about local payment schemes, which is reducing costs in a major way. So I feel the challenge on the economics, which has historically been a big deal, is going to go away fairly rapidly in the next three to five years. So I think this system which has been on a, you know, on a potential for explosive growth, it's going to pan out very soon. So I think that I feel very excited about. The other part is the role that government and regulators are going to play in this space is big. Uh, a lot of use cases we discussed, we were discussing use cases yesterday. A big use case is what government does in these markets mm -hmm. as well. So wh which way that goes, mm -hmm. what decisions regulator takes, that's going to play a very important role as well. Yeah, so tell me what you're seeing in Brazil then with particularly how the government, because the consumer rights and all of these things are becoming higher and higher on the agenda with a lot of governments across the world and certainly I, I would be interested to know what, how do you feel what is happening in terms of regulation and what the governments are doing in your particular countries? Let's sure. start with Brazil. I think that uh, the industry itself, uh, in lack of a, a, regu a formal regulation, has all regulated itself, but the government is more and more getting into that. We expect the government to regulate the whole car business in Brazil uh, later this year, but I think, it's, uh, I think it's very promising the way it's being uh, conducted, a lot of conversations, so I think that it's going to go smoothly and it's going to actually uh, boost the growth of, uh, of the card schemes in Brazil rather than uh, establish some barriers for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're not going to hear too many bankers say this, but I think our regulator is doing a fantastic job. I, I think you no, think uh, your regulator is doing a fantastic absolutely, job? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I, I think a lot, m they are being a lot more proactive and, uh, and, and uh, forward looking and visionary about the payment industry than actually banks themselves are. Um, and uh, so they are, they are writing up what the 10 year, 20 year vision for the payments industry looks like and uh, asking banks, hey, do you guys agree? Um, and uh, banks are looking at it and going, oh yeah, that sounds kind of good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a weird situation, but, uh, but the regulator is being very, very forward looking. And uh, the, the regulatory environment as well is actually being made more and more conducive for, uh, for banks to go in there and make electronic payments happen and make it economically viable for everybody and so on. It, the ball is now, in my mind, very clearly up to the banks, uh, other kind of non-bank players in this market, uh, all of us to pick it up and say, what can we do with all this enabling environment that has been created by the regulator? And uh, how can we use this to enable true payment solutions for vast majorities of population who are still depending on cash and check? And how can we convert them uh, into more electronic ways of paying? So it all sounds pretty bullish that you know this is you know a market for the taking. So what would be the one thing that could be the span in the works that we haven't mentioned yet? Something that we probably, what would be the unknown known? I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be different for different markets, but, uh, but from an Indian standpoint, um, I think uh, the big kind of the known unknown is for, uh, is that banks haven't yet figured out the right customer experience. Uh, which will make customers use electronic payments. Mm -hmm. Today the customer says, hey, it's easy for me to pay cash. It's easy for me, like you yeah. said, to take the money out of the ATM and go and, and <laughs> buy stuff in cash. So shame on you, by the way. Um, <laughs> this is Cybos. Uh, I uh, need but, to be, I need to get more hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but, um, so it's, the customer finds it convenient mm -hmm. to use cash. Banks, financial institutions need to figure out a way to come up with payment mechanisms which the customer finds equally convenient to use, mm -hmm. but actually finds that little bit extra yeah. and has a little bit extra value. And uh, and, and, and he, the, the customer, he or she finds it uh, uh, attractive to actually use that electronic payment option. If we are not able to come up with such an option, it's not going to take off and all this potential is going to just remain potential. Um, and, uh, and, and hence it's really important for banks and non-bank institutions to sort of uh, you know, put their heads together and say, what are you good at, what are we good at, how can we put it all together and come up with a solution which, uh, which makes sense for, uh, for the consumer. Mm -hmm. 
I totally agree with that. I think that the customer experience and the education of people to actually start using electronic payment means is key. Uh, but maybe there the regulator has uh, some advantages. Maybe uh, some fiscal advantages or maybe some uh, positive uh, incentives mm -hmm. for the customer to start using a electronic uh, payment means. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that would make us. a big change. <laughs> <laughs> bribing us. Okay, well, we've got to leave it there, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Very interesting.